What's up Technobo here for Server Pro and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using Enchantment Solution. Enchantment Solution adds 56 additional enchantments to your server. Add plenty of useful and unique enchantments. To install the plugin, head over to the plugin section. Search for Enchantment Solution. Install the version that's compatible with your server and restart. Alternatively, you can download it from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. Because there's so much to this plugin, to keep this video a reasonable length, I'll only run through some of it. Upon joining the server, we get a link in chat to the Enchantment Solution Wiki. If you need any help, this is a great place to get more info. Users with permission can use slash enchant to enchant an item in their hand. You can follow the command with an enchantment name, level as well as a player name and a slot number to enchant an item in someone else's inventory. Slash enchant unsafe does the same, but it allows enchantment levels to be above the maximum, as well as enchantments that aren't supposed to be put onto this item. Slash enchant info followed by a name gives the description of the provided enchantment. Slash enchant info without anything after gives a list of enchantments. Slash remove enchant removes specific enchantments from an item in your hand. You can follow this with the same options as the enchant command to use it on other players as well. Slash ES book allows you to spawn enchanted books. Follow it with an enchantment name, level, and amount. Alternatively, you can follow it with a player name, then random enchant or random multi enchant instead of an enchantment name to give yourself a random book. The plugin may seem a little daunting at first, but with the help of a few added GUIs, everything's a lot simpler. Placing down an enchantment table, you can see that we have a custom GUI when we interact with it. Clicking on an item places it into the GUI for us to interact with. Clicking a book gives us that enchantment on your item and takes whatever it costs to get it. Hovering over the book gives you some info on what you're actually putting onto your item. You can add up to four items into the GUI to enchant them all at once as well. The Anvil and Grindstone also have custom GUIs. Assuming you have the permissions, you can get there with slash ES Anvil and slash ES Grindstone. But of course, you can open the GUI by interacting with the actual blocks themselves as well. The plugin also comes with its own RPG system. Slash ES RPG brings up your GUI. Offering over the instruction book at the top, we see that this page shows all of your currently owned enchantments. To add levels to them, we click on a book and then select levels one at a time on the next page. Slash RPG stats followed by a name shows ES RPG stats for another player in the chat. Slash RPG top shows the players with the highest ES RPG level in the server. Slash RPG edit allows you to edit ES RPG stats for a given player, including yourself. Slash ES calc lets you view enchantability information for the server setup. Players with op can modify them in this menu. You don't need to adjust any of the settings here as it's rather confusing. These work similarly to the enchantability system in vanilla Minecraft. This can get incredibly confusing very quickly. So for the sake of keeping this tutorial short, I'll be touching on it lightly. Basically, the higher an item's enchantability level is, the more likely it will be to gain high level enchantments or multiple enchantments upon being enchanted. Let's get to the remaining commands. You wouldn't use these unless you have a specific reason to. For advanced users, you can use slash esdebug to generate a debug.yml file for faster debugging. Slash esreset force closes all custom GUI inventories. Slash esfix fixes custom enchantments on items that lost them from other plugins. And finally, we have slash esconfig. While we can edit the plugin's config from the files and use slash esreload to reload the plugin settings, we can use slash esconfig to bring up a nice GUI to edit the settings in game. Entering in the command brings up a GUI where you can pick a file and then depending on the type of the setting, we can interact with it. A boolean is either true or false, clicking on it toggles the setting. An enum is a custom value, clicking on it brings up a menu of possible options we can select. A string is text and allows you to enter a value via an anvil's GUI. Integer is a number value and is entered the same way as a string. Settings with the nested values type bring up another GUI menu with more settings inside of it. These can be types I mentioned previously. Locate the config in the plugin folder. While the plugin lets you edit the settings in a game using a GUI, we can still do it manually here as well. 
The language folder contains multiple localizations that allow you to edit the text the plugin returns to users. The language.yml file also contains a localization for the plugin. The extras folder and backups.db can be ignored. Most of the settings files in here are self-explanatory or are at least laid out very simply. RPG.yml contains settings for the ESRPG part of the plugin, and we have some basic toggles and options for each enchantment below it. Minigame.yml contains settings for the minigame enchanting table. Don't worry, there isn't actually a minigame, this is just the name for the enchanting table's GUI. Hard.yml has just one setting, and that's whether enchantments allow increased health in hard mode. For example, the life enchantment increases maximum health when an item is worn. Fishing.yml has a list of options in it, but it serves one purpose. Custom enchanted gear can appear on spawned mobs, loot chests, and from fishing. This file just adjusts the chances of picking up enchanted gear from fishing. Config.yml is by far the best documented options file in this plugin. Every option has an explanation of what it does above it. In here, we can enable or disable custom GUIs. We can adjust the maximum levels for obtainable enchantments, adjust whether custom or high-level enchantments spawn on mobs, and appear from fishing or in loot chests. Advancements.yml contains a list of every custom advancement added by the plugin. Here we can enable or disable them, and adjust whether you get a notification when you obtain them. And finally, we have enchantments.yml. This file contains some basic settings such as whether enchanting with higher amounts of lapis gives higher enchantability. You can adjust the chance to get more than one enchantment, when enchanting, and more. Every option below this point applies to each and every enchantment added by the plugin. They all follow the same template. We can enable or disable each enchantment, adjust whether you can find the item naturally, and if you can find them at all. And of course, you can adjust what items it can be applied to, but of course, this is ignored when using the slash enchant unsafe command. Under advanced, we can adjust the category to change the chances that it can be found. Then we can adjust the enchantability constant, modifier, start level, and max level for the enchantment. If an item already has an enchantment listed under conflicting enchantments, then you are unable to add this enchantment to the list. Permissions allows you to set whether you need a certain level enchanting table, anvil, or grindstone to apply this enchantment to an item. This formula is then repeated until the end of the file. There are tons of options and customizability. Again, it's a lot easier to customize these settings using the in-game options menu, but of course you can customize it here in the files themselves. Hopefully this quick tutorial explained the basics for this plugin, and for more info, make sure to check out the plugin's wiki. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!